Just tell me we have no time. Praise the Lord and welcome to our program with Pastor Joseph and Osama Doc Duke. Here we are talking about lies in our textbooks here in the United States of America. And we finished in our series the first lie that Brother Osama was addressing, which was Israel and or Palestine and the way that the stealth jihad in the United States of America, Muslims and uh, liberals who carry water for Muslim jihadists, whether they realize it or not, are infiltrating uh, in our textbooks uh, certain issues, religious and political. They are bringing in bias. They are using, in some cases, outright lies, other cases, uh, fabrications, and even sometimes simply a nuance to begin to bring our children who are hearing the lie long enough to a point when they reach adulthood and go into the workforce force and begin to vote, that they will be brainwashed, if you will, to support the Islamic agenda. Mm -hmm. So why don't we start off right now. Brother Osama, welcome again to our program. Thank you. Appreciate you. I'm looking forward to moving on. That was a great series, mm -hmm. but now this is even more exciting to me, lies about the Bible. You know, Pastor Joseph, it's amazing that now we're in America, uh, cannot talk about the Bible, cannot teach the Bible in our public schools, yeah. and uh, we, we, we just have to separate church yeah. from state. We don't want our children in our public school to know any truth about the Word of God. And if you talk to the most people in charge, they will tell you, well, the children can go to the church, yeah. and they can learn about the Bible yeah. in the church. As a matter of fact, we already know the Bible. We do not want to learn anything about the Bible. Mm. And you think about it, 80% mm. of our children in our public schools never went to church. Yeah. Their parents do not go to church. So how in the world do we expect that children know the truth about the Bible from the church if they never been to church? Yeah. But what's yeah. amazing is, while we Christian cannot teach the Bible or, or write about the Bible in our public schools, we allowed the Muslims in America to talk and to write and to say whatever you wish about the Bible to our children in our public schools. Amazing. Well, let's start right off then. Let's Before we do that, I have to share one more, one more thing that's very important. Sure. What we're about to see, these lies in the textbooks, is nothing new for us Christians. Because mm -hmm. guess what, Pastor Joseph? We have seen these attacks on the Word of God a good 200 years ago oh, yeah. in the high and low criticism as the ungodly, liberal, uh, uh, Wolf in sheepskin, as the Bible right. describes him, right. attacked the Bible years ago. Yeah. They did all this trash work, and guess what? There were many godly Christian men and women who respond to all these lies and expose it, and it's, it's over. But guess what? Muslims, with their deception, once again, they dig into the past, bring the same uh, 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 lies, and they are putting it in our textbooks four purposes, and we're going to see this as we go. A very interesting connection on that is uh, if you study the uh, higher school of biblical criticism was developed in uh, Germany. Yeah. And what you'll find is that this liberal, extreme liberal um, scholarly work uh, basically against the Bible uh, flourished and came to fruition in the late 19th century. Mm. And let me just point this out to our viewers. If you'll go and study the history, there was a anti-Semitic, absolutely, an anti-Jew agenda in Germany, not just during the time of Hitler, but all the way back in the late 19th century. And so they were denying that a tabernacle ever exists. They were denying that a temple ever exists. They were denying the whole Jewish religion ever exists until a few hundred years before Jesus. Well, this is what's happening even today, Pastor Joseph. Yeah. When we talk, we, when we, we, don't, we don't want to talk about sin, yeah. we're convicted in our heart because of our sin. So the best thing is, if you remove sin from the Bible, you don't mention the verses about talk about, about sin, about then you feel okay. So now here is the German. They want to get rid of the Jew. Yeah. They don't want to feel guilt about the getting rid of the Jew. So the best thing is say, well, what's written in the Bible is not true. Yeah. So if you don't have any biblical support for the right for God's chosen people, to live, then it's okay. The There's no guilt. The seeds of that done in the 1940s was already uh, there, inherent in German culture and in higher education in the uh, late 19th century. And that's what we're about to see right now Let's as we go to our study of uh, what the Muslims did in our textbooks by quoting some of the early uh, misconceptions about the Bible 
uh, in our textbooks. First slide. Go ahead, Pastor Drew. World History, Thompson Wadsworth, 2004, page 25. Many scholars today doubt that the early books of the Hebrew Bible reflect the true history of the early Israelites. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's stop here for a second. Is this his opinion? The, the, <laughs> well, well, the, me, the, the, the gentleman wrote this, or, or is this a fact? Uh, well, by the way, how many are many? Like one, two, three, four, five? And, and, and <laughs> which, which one of the many? Yeah, right. How exactly. many of them are alive today? How it, many of them exist? Notice it doesn't even say the majority. No, many. It says many. Yeah, many. Smart move. Yeah. Smart move. How you yeah. make up your word to yeah. attack the Bible. There's a lot of PhDs in the world. You can ask them, and they have a lot of differences and a lot of different issues. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Go ahead, Pastor Jules. All right. Many scholars today doubt the early books of the Hebrew Bible reflect the true history of the early Israelites. They argue that the early books of the Bible written centuries after the events described preserve only what the Israelites came to believe about themselves and that recent archaeological evidence often contradicts the details of the biblical account. You know, it's, it's amazing, Pastor Joseph, because I, I did a lot of study and lots of mm -hmm. search about all the archaeological evidence. As a matter of fact, yeah. when I was in New Orleans Baptist Seminary, mm -hmm. we have a wonderful three hours uh, study with Dr. Ortiz. Yeah. Now, Dr. Ortiz is not just a professor sitting on a disc uh, to learn about the archaeology work of the mm -hmm. Bible or the archaeology of Israel. Yeah. This is a man who spent years and years digging with his own hand shovels, with teams right. in the Middle East. And uh, I was shocked to learn from this man, and he has the videos, the yeah. pictures, the slides in his presentation. Very, very powerful presentation. I wish, I wish the church can adopt his study in all over our churches in America to learn about the archaeological work of godly Christian men and women who literally uh, put tears and, and sweat in this project. Yes. And he, he was always struggling with having enough money to go and dig some more. Dr. Ortiz, with all the study he did for all these years, I don't know how many years, 20 some years, he's digging there. He said to us in the class, he said, every time we meet a difficulty, a hard passage in the Bible, and we do not know about the true archaeological evidence for specific war, for the specific battle, for the specific city. And he told us about the, like the crossing of the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. People mocked that. Right. Uh, the existence of specific cities. Yeah. And they went and they dig and they dig and they dig. And guess what, Pastor Joseph? The conclusion of all the study that all the archaeological digging, all 100%, not 99.9, 100% support the biblical fact, yes. the, the truth we have in, our, in the, in the yes. biblical account. That's why we know we say the Bible is not just story. It's account. Yeah. It is written about what happened. It's a history. Not, true history. Not one archaeological evidence yet until this day came to disprove uh, the Bible or to uh, support less of the truth of the Word of God. And as a matter of fact, Sir Walter Ramsey, as I understand, uh, he went in the late 19th century under the uh, misconception that he's going to find a lot of things that contradict the Bible. And after him becoming perhaps the most famous archaeologist in the earliest part of, of that field, mm -hmm. uh, I, I believe, this, and you have to study this history. I can be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. But what I heard yeah. is that he essentially became a Christian after doing archaeology in, in Egypt and then later in Israel and other places by seeing the amazing confirmation of the Bible through archaeology. But do you know what you're going to write in our history books? Yeah. They will mention the first half of the gentleman life yeah. when he was doubting. <laughs> and they will ignore the everything yeah. he wrote yeah. after he became a Christian. Sure. We see this so many times. Yeah. Now, we're going to look at the screen again here to okay. see what was the purpose of what the early liberal Christian wrote about the Bible. Here it is. Watch it carefully in the next slide. What is generally agreed, however, is that between 1200 and 1000 BCE, the Israelites emerged as a distinct group of people, possibly organized into tribes or a league of tribes, who established a united kingdom known as Israel. This is uh, the beginning of Israel, mm. the, the tribe, maybe, it's, yeah. it's a possible, but they, did, they a didn't possibility. exist at all, there was no identity, and then all of a sudden, about this time, they kind of came together. Yep, they, yeah, they, they got you. Well, the 12 tribes of yeah, Israel yeah. exist when Jacob had his 12 sons. That's right. Long time before that. Yeah. Actually, that is before... About 1900 AD? I mean, uh, 1900 uh, BC? Uh, 18, 1800, after Abraham, uh, yeah, Jacob, okay. and his son. So, 1800. So, Not 600 years to before 800 this years. Life. So yeah. They ignore that. Yeah, absolutely. 
It's like this is not true. Well, and, and that previous quote was to discount that very thing. They say, oh, well, you know, the early history in the Old Testament, we don't believe in it. So, so what they're saying is we're not going to take the Bible, but because at that time there was actually a historical reference of them being kings, yeah. well, we can't deny that. How we can you deny yeah. the exist of the state of Jerusalem, yeah. the capital of King David? But you know what Muslim will say today? Jerusalem yeah. is actually a Muslim capital. Mm. It belonged to the Arab. It does not belong to yeah. David or his people. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And nonsense and God have yeah, anything have, they conquer already taught war is theirs it's yeah. like Spain Spain is a Muslim country right Spain is, is Darul Islam because yes. they at one time took it over indeed and so even though they don't have any power right now it, it, fighting they said I know we're going off but real quickly for our people to understand this yeah a Muslim fighting jihad against Spain right now mm -hmm. is a hundred percent okay and the in Islam because after all, this is the house of Islam. This is land that Islam once conquered, and so therefore, whoever is there, whether they attack Muslims or not, they are at a state of war against Islam by controlling the land that was once Muslim. People need to understand this thing. <laughs> and so, and that goes back to the Israel. Yeah. Because people don't understand, you know, uh, it's like I was in a, in a class. This was in a Christian seminary. Yeah. And, and this guy, uh, he was a good guy, but he was saying, well, you know, um, if it, 1948 was a mistake and all this kind of stuff, he was kind of going a little bit towards the liberal camp in this argument that, you know, well, th this was the Muslim's land. I said, hey, before 1948. I said, okay, how about before 648? Yeah. Who's, whose question. land was that's it question. then? Oh, well, well, well we're not going to go back that far. Well, well now, wait a minute, wait a minute. I said, <laughs> how, how did the Muslims... Got Arabs that. get that land. To start with, I hear the yeah. same argument about yeah. Egypt. I say, you know what? You want Israel to leave the land yeah. and give it to the original people, which don't exist yeah. anymore? That's <laughs> well. fine. How about you, Muslim, leave my home country, Egypt, yeah. and go back to Saudi Arabia? And, and give it to the cops, right? I'd, like, I'd yeah. like to have control over the land of Egypt, but they don't want to. And go that. back from Iraq. From every other 57 Muslim country, yeah. go back to Mecca. But right. all the Muslims in Mecca. Right. And right. as a matter of fact, they have to leave Mecca too. Yeah. Because Mecca belongs. Was the Quraysh. <laughs> was the polytheist. All right. Let's move to the summary response. We can do the a whole new show summary. out of yeah. that one. <laughs> well, Brother David, that's awesome. I'm telling you. Go ahead. Read what we have there, Brother. Bias and doubt contradict Israel's right to exist and the credibility of the Bible itself. And, of course, the Bible gives such uh, strong evidence to mm -hmm. the credibility and the right of Israel to exist, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Next point. All Jews and Christians regard the Bible as the infallible word of God, not some relic. So when you say uh, many scholars, I'm sorry, he did not name for me one. Mm -hmm. And if you will call them many, I would love to know who they are, where they live, what is their relationship with the Bible. Yeah. You know, but the sad thing, Pastor Joseph, is our students, in our public schools, when they hear that, add to that what they have already taught in the biology class and in the evolution class and in this whatever other class, all this gathered together, the Bible is not true. They have no I idea. Mean, where is creation in our public school? It doesn't exist. So here we go, kiss the first uh, couple of chapters in the Bible, goodbye. Where is what? And, and so on and on with everything. We are destroying mm -hmm. our public schools. We're destroying our children by allowing these lies mm -hmm. to be embedded in their head. And by the way, let's clarify for our viewers when it says all Jews and Christians regard the Bible as infallible word of God. That is true for all believing of course. Jews and Christians. Of however, yeah. however mm -hmm. there are many people who are Jews and Christians by name who might say, oh, well, you know, the Bible isn't necessarily the word of God. And as a matter of fact, those very people who attacked the Bible in the 19th century in Germany would have called themselves Christian. Well, and so we, we need to make, because, because what's going to happen I, I, is the Muslims are going to say, oh, look at this Christian, Bart Ehrman. Yeah. Yeah, a real pious <laughs> Christian, right? Like, look, look, the, this Christian says about the Bible, why yeah. don't you follow him? He's yeah. a Christian. I, even yeah. Muslims today in America, they have plenty of books are, are taken inside the churches written by liberal Christians yeah. who like the Quran, who like the More Islam. More than the Bible. And they use it. And at the same time, I said, have you ever read what this, what this gentleman you read in his book or you're bragging about his name. He literally, this person in another book, mm -hmm. is mocking the creation. He said millions of years. But you Muslim believe in six-day creation, yeah. as Allah said, yeah. as Muhammad said. Yeah. So why are you using liberals wow. to speak about the love of uh, the Quran and the beauty of Islam, but you're rejecting the rest of his writings 
where he de denies the existence of God as a creator. The best arguments that Muslims can find against biblical Christianity come from Christians, and those aren't true Christians, they're liberal Christians. Absolutely. <laughs> Move on, third point, Pastor Joseph. All right. Many scholars and archaeologists have found ample evidence supporting the truth of biblical accounts of history, and we've talked about that. Dr. Ortiz, God yes. bless him, and I wish I had a billion dollars so I can give it to him yeah. so he can go and dig some more. Oh, boy. There's so much history in the Middle East. There's so much history in Egypt. And, you know, every discovery we have in Egypt, there's one is actually Najah Hamadi. It's very close mm -hmm. to where I used to live in Egypt. Oh, okay. And they found these pieces of Bibles. Yeah. And I promise you, when they discover these things, the Muslim eyes got this big. Yeah. Because, uh-huh, now we got some old Bible, hundreds of years We're before gonna Muhammad. The We're going to prove to you that the Bible has been corrupted, <laughs> the Bible has been changed. And guess what happened? They dig, they read it, and they were shocked. The, the truth in this Bible pieces, uh, you know, because hundreds of yeah, years. fragments. Fragments. Of papyri perfect match to what we have in our Bible today. So every digging, and I say it again, every archaeological uh, evidence we have found so far prove and support that the Bible is the Word of God. But that's not what Muslims want. That's no. what Muslims uh, yeah. believe. Let's move on to the next piece here. We're going to go to the Bible. I'm, I mean, we can talk about all the lies yeah. uh, the liberal mm -hmm. uh, for the last uh, 200 years or so would yeah. like to put on the Bible, right. and all the lies Muslims are going to be using. Now I'm going to I just was a, I want to quote a few verses from the Bible yes. to prove that the Bible is the Word of God. And mm -hmm. then we're going to go to the Quran yes. to see what Allah said in the Quran about my Bible. Hopefully right. this will encourage our wonderful students and our wonderful Americans to know not only the Bible said it's the perfect Word of God, but even the Quran declares mm -hmm. the same fact, which was written 600 years after Christ. Bless. All right, go Second ahead. Timothy, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Oh, so let, let me stop for a second. Did he say some of the scripture? All. What is all? A-L-L, that I means kamila, kul, all, kul. everything, kul. everything, uh, I love, everywhere. I love to listen to you when you speak Arabic, <laughs> Pastor Joseph. You put, you put music into the Arabic language. Yes. Kul. So when the Bible said all, it means all. Oh. Now, do you know From that Genesis I'm, to Revelation. Yeah, I'm going to quote you the Quran, and Allah in the Quran will say also all. Yeah, and let's make sure that people understand. Uh, because this program is, is dealing with Christians and Muslims, okay, so Christians believe the Bible is mm -hmm. true, and this verse shows that all. And now we're going to go and show the Quran shows the same thing. Uh, now, a secular atheist might say, well, just because the Bible says so doesn't mean so, or just because the Quran says so doesn't mean so. We understand that. There are many proofs to show the Bible as the Word of God. But Absolutely. because this program for Christians and, and Muslims, mm -hmm. let's take a look. All right. Continue with the verse we have here. All Scripture, 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17. Oh, we didn't finish. Okay. Yes. Let's, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. What else do you need? Can you imagine you and I, we're going to live We need the Christian hadith. <laughs> <laughs> Not I'm saying about yeah. the Word of God. Because sometimes people come to me, Brother Joseph, and say, yeah. well, we do not have the answer for everything in the Bible. I say, you know mm -hmm. what? I got in the Bible, which will make me a man or a woman for other women, uh, uh, equipped for every good work. Yes. I mean, if we live and practice all what the Bible have already written, mm -hmm. what is in the Bible? We don't want any, I mean, do you think we need few more chapters? Maybe it will make us even better than that. Yeah. Let's practice what's in the Bible. People aren't reading what God has given them. I, I'm a pastor in an American church. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants a word from God. Everybody wants to hear something special from God. But when you get down to it, Brother Osama, Americans are watching six hours of TV on the average. Can you believe that? Six hours on the average of TV a day. Now, let me ask you a question. How much does the average American read the Bible a day in, in minutes, seconds, or hours? It's less than one second. The average when, American. When you compare it to the time we waste, uh, I, I, I am shocked that on Sundays, when we have this, this important game, people can sit and watch one or two games of four hours. That's four eight hours. hours. But they don't want to sit in the church after 12 o'clock. You, you, and you preach more than 30 minutes. And 
Oh, 12 o'clock, people start standing. You know, I, I don't, I don't uh, work clock when I speak Good in churches. You. you know Good why? Good for you. Because I know what time 12 o'clock when the people start leaving the church. I know it's 12 o'clock, <laughs> so I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> they got to get in the buffet line. <laughs> yes. Let's get uh, one more verse from the Bible, and then we'll move into the Quran. Ready. What did Jesus say here? Matthew 5, 18, For assuredly I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will be by no means. Pass from the law till all is fulfilled. Have you seen the earth today? Are we still on earth? I think so. Is heaven still there? I think so. All the word of God is still perfect. Yes. And, and, and this is a fact. This is the truth about the, the, the teaching of the Bible. The Bible yes. is there and the truth is there. Amen. Now, uh, we're, we're, we're going to talk a little bit about the Bible and we're going to move to the Quran as Good. we promised we our people. We have about eight minutes left in our program. Eight minutes? Yeah, I know. You talk too much. Well, we'll do more. All right. Well, I got to right. say something. All right. I love you, brother. All right. We're, we're, I want to share just a little bit of information about the Bible for our dear, wonderful audience. Now, the Bible is written in 1,600 years okay. compared to the Quran, 23 years. Right. Uh, or actually, less than that. Muhammad yeah. claimed to be a prophet yeah. 40, so 21 years or so. Yeah. The Bible was written by 40 human. The, the Quran was written by one guy, mm -hmm. Muhammad. The Bible well, it was, wasn't written, but, but was recited. Oh, because yeah. we know later it was yeah, written. It was written later, yeah. yeah, after he died. Yeah, and, okay. Zayd ibn Thabit. Yeah. Now, the, the, the Bible was written in three continents. Yeah. That's Europe, Africa, and Egypt. Okay. The Bible is written in three languages, Arabic, Aramaic, and Hebrew. Uh, sorry, Arabic. Uh, <laughs> Arabic. <Hebrew>. Arabic. <laughs> I mean, Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. It's not the Praise Quran. God. No, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> good. The Quran is written in Arabic. All good, right? good. Okay. Uh, the Bible has two testaments. The new and the old. The old old and the new. covenant and new covenant. Amen. The Quran is only one book, and he, in this book, denies the two covenants. Yeah. The covenant of the Old Testament, the sacrifice of the animals, and the covenant of the New Testament, the fulfillment of the sacrifice of Excellent the Old point. Testament. Excellent point. Excellent uh, point. But the Bible have one message. Yes. But the Quran have how many message? Well, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he's jumping, bumbling everywhere. Yeah, he's, I, he's, he's pleasing everybody and then killing everybody. I lost count. All right. Uh, I want to read this Quran verse. I want to actually go ahead and read it for our wonderful audience. Oh, about okay. What Allah said in Quran chapter 16 and verse 43. Very good. Quran 16 verse 43. Yeah. And we did not send before you any except men that we inspired. So ask the people of the reminder, Jews and Christians, if you were not knowing. This is a very powerful verse in the Quran. Mm -hmm. Because if Muslim will deny the inspiration of any portion of the Bible, mm -hmm. We have a problem. What is the problem? Allah in the Quran said, all the men, that's Quran chapter 16, verse 3, uh, verse 43. 43. All the men who came before Muhammad. So if it is Moses, if it is Joshua, if it is David, if it's Isaiah, Elisha, Elijah, if it was Matthew, if it was Mark, if it was Paul, if it was Peter, any of the men who came before Muhammad were inspired. Yeah, because it says, uh, and before the also uh, in 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 the uh, Yusuf Ali, uh -huh. right? We sent the messengers. So just to make people understand, this is not just talking about just Muslim men, right? This is talking about all of those all prophets. the people who yeah. came before Muhammad, right? And all of them were, were what? Rijalun nuhilam. It's they are men we inspired. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I yeah. mean, the, the Bible is not just some book written by some people who thought about maybe this is a nice thing to write. No. Allah in the Quran is telling us that all the men who came before Muhammad were inspired. That means the Bible is the inspiration, the word of God. Yes. That means, as we're going to see in a minute, is that no one can change it. Right. Allah's word cannot be changed. This is a very important fact. We, we, we must emphasize on and we must believe in because the Quran said so. It's not just we, yeah. Christian, believe in or say. Now there's a bunch of questions. We must ask. Mm -hmm. The Muslims said the Bible has been changed. The Muslims said the Bible has been corrupted. Here is a, here's a few questions I ask you, Pastor Joseph, and mm -hmm. you answer for me. The first question, when the Bible was destroyed? Can Muslims come up with an answer? Well, and there again, you know, make, let people understand that, you know, I can take this Bible, and I'd never do it, but I can take this Bible and burn it, but that doesn't mean the Bible is destroyed. And, you know, there's a lot of people who've burned Bibles in the past, but the Bible was never destroyed. We have... Uh, all the way back to thousands, the lifetime. Thousands of manuscripts. Like 6,000 New, 6, Testament, New Testament, Manuscript. Testament alone. Yeah. New Testament alone. Yeah. And so we, we can lose every Bible in American English language. It's never destroyed. And by the way, we never had a, a Bible recension like Islam under Uthman did of the Quran. We never burned it. Mo and Muslims burned the Quran. The original manuscript, yeah, the seven right. original Quran. We never Osman did ibn Affan did a great job to unite the Muslims. Yeah. Don't kill each other now. We have one Quran, there the Osmani go. Quran. Yeah. Not Allah Quran, not yeah. Muhammad Quran, not Fatma Quran, the yeah. Osmani Quran. Right, I love right. it. 
Now, so the first question, we don't know when. Who? Who destroys the Bible? The maybe enemies of the not, Christian faith. Yeah, right. Or maybe the Christians themselves, the yeah. enemy of the Jewish faith. <laughs> or maybe the Jews themselves. Yeah. Why people would destroy the Bible? It's the second thing. Why? Why they would destroy the Bible? I love yeah. it to say, the enemies of Christianity, does, is it, does they believe in it? No. Yeah. Why they destroy it? You, you know, here's a great point real quickly. Mm. The Christians, if they really wanted to change something, they would have changed the Old Testament. But note that the Jews and the Christians believe word for word on the Old Testament exactly the same. And that's the next question. Where in the Bible there is any passage destroyed? You know, every time I, I talk to Muslims and they share with me about some of the errors in the Bible, yeah. the sins of the prophets. Yeah. David commits sin with Bathsheba and kill Uriah the Hittite. Peter denied Jesus. Even he cursed. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine Peter? Mm -hmm. When he says some bad word, he cursed. Yeah. I don't know this Jesus you're yeah. talking about. Yeah. What, was there any smart Jew to clean up the life of, of or, their David and make him look nice? Yeah. There was not one Christian man with common sense who loved Peter and takes this denying of Jesus they out of the Bible. They left it all in there, yep, because it was true, and that, that's right. That makes us go for sure that uh, the truth is the Bible is the perfect word of God. Now I'm going to quote one verse, Quran chapter 15, verse 9. Quran surely, 15, 9. Go ahead. Surely we have sent down the reminder the Bible to compare, if you compare to Quran 1643, sure. also the Quran 1644, and surely we will be its guardian. Allah in the Quran is yeah. assured every wonderful Muslim out there that Allah sent the reminder, mm -hmm. and we know that Moses receives the reminder because some Muslims will tell you, well, the reminder is the Quran. No, it's not the Quran. Listen carefully. And Allah will watch over his reminder. The revelation, the inspiration which Allah gave to men, all the men who came before Muhammad. Let me give you the proof about the reminder. It's not just the Quran, it's even the Bible. What do we read in Quran chapter 21 and verse 48, Pastor Joseph? And indeed we gave Moses and Aaron the discriminator and a light and a reminder for the fearer. Reminder. So Moses received reminder. Did Moses receive any Quran at all? No, Torah. The Torah. So the, the Torah. Torah is also calling in the Quran to be the reminder. And by the way, Yusuf Ali, he, he messes up here for him, but he actually says in 44, we sent them with clear signs and scriptures. He actually called he called the the scripture reminder because scriptures. That's how Yusuf Ali used the Bible, is yeah. the word scripture. There's yeah. no one to... There's yeah. no one about the, the But I mean, even, even he admits that it, it was is. the scripture. But, but anyway, he's right yeah. to emphasize that the Quran is a book, but the Bible is scripture. But yeah. Ahl Kitab, the people of the book, people he did not book. say the people of the scripture. Right. He lied. He said people of the scripture, but no, it's the people of the book, yeah. Kitab. Uh, Allah in the Quran, Pastor Joseph, is demanding, commanding every Muslim to believe in the mm -hmm. Bible. Yes. Allah is an all knower. Why Allah will ask Muslims to believe in a book which was corrupted? And this verse is written 600 years after Christ. And it said in the previous that he's the guardian of the book. Of the book, of yeah. course. Go ahead. Okay, Surah 4136. Mm -hmm. Oh, you who have believed, believe in Allah and his messenger and the book which he has sent down on his messenger. and That's the, the Quran. Mm -hmm. And the book which he has sent down before thee. Whoever becomes an infidel in Allah and his angels and his books and his messengers and the last day, so indeed he is strayed far way. Astray. So Allah in the Quran is telling the Muslims they must believe in the Bible. Let me close with this verse because I believe this is a very important verse. It's Quran chapter 10 and verse 94. Oh yeah. Because Muslims will tell you, well, there used to be a Bible and it was lost. Mm -hmm. And uh, some say, well, there used to be a Bible that's corrupted. Yeah. Listen to Allah's word to Muhammad who was doubting his own Quran. Go ahead, Pastor Surah 10, verse 94. So if you, Muhammad, were in doubt concerning what we have sent down to you, the Quran, so ask those Jews and Christians who are reading the book, the Bible, before you. Indeed, the truth came to you from your Lord, so do not be of the doubters. Muhammad was doubting the Quran. Mm -hmm. Allah, in Quran chapter 10, verse 94, is asking him to check his Quran, which obviously he didn't do, with the people who were reading the book before him. Mm -hmm. To check his Quran from the Jew and the Christian who was reading. You know, when the Quran say who were reading, that's the present tense continuation. Yeah. It means two things. The Bible was there because you cannot read a book you don't have. Mm -hmm. The second <laughs> important fact that the Bible was perfect in Muhammad days. Right. For Allah's all knower will never ask Muhammad to check his Quran mm -hmm. with a corrupt book. Mm -hmm. That's make nonsense at all. And that's it for and me. We have the Bible from the time of Muhammad and from the time before Muhammad, as you point out, and it has not changed from today. Not one word. An airtight case from the Quran mm -hmm. about the authority and integrity of the Bible.
Mm -hmm. Any Muslim who doesn't believe is a hypocrite. Absolutely. Absolutely. We know what happens to him in the Quran. All, All right. right. Wonderful show, Brother Thumbs Osama. Up. Thank and you. And we're going to continue on. What's our next lie going to be? Our next lie is going to be, I have I to We're going to go to lies. Uh, this was about the Bible. Absolutely. We're going to do lies about Jesus. No, right? no. Lies about the Quran. Lies about the Quran. Stay tuned with this series of programs. I'm Pastor Joseph. This is Osama Doc Duke at Trinity Channel, www.trinitychannel.com. Dot com and remember brother osama www.straightway.org we'll see you next time right here good show wait a minute what is the music when i like the music no uh, they're going to do a different one remember a different intro and outro because that's the wrong one okay i bet you they're waiting let's, for us let's for do life. jesus tonight live <laughs>